Journalist Charles Fishman is the author of The Big Thirst, The Secret Life and Turbulent Future of Water. Here's a preview of our conversation on the next Unscripted. Okay, the Earth is a closed system, right? <laughs> yes, it is. You, you bring up a very important point. There is no such thing as fresh water. Right. That's a, but most people, most people don't um, ever stop and ask the question, where did the water come from? <laughs> and actually, it's, 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 a little, it's a little bit embarrassing. I, uh, I was six months into writing the book, and I was actually talking to a very boring scientist <laughs> about how you die of dehydration. It seemed like an interesting topic, but he was making it dull. And, and my mind wandered. And it, my mind wandered actually to, a, while this guy was droning, to an image of Niagara Falls. And I realized that I had no idea where Niagara Falls comes from. Niagara Falls, of course, comes from the Niagara River. The Niagara River comes from Lake Erie. Lake Erie comes from rainfall. But where did the rain come from? Where right. did the water, how did the water actually get here? Right. And, and that actually gave me the motivation to get off the phone with the guy who was boring. And I, and I, I literally felt a, a moment of embarrassment, even though it was all internal. I'd been working on water for, for, for nine months, if you include the bottled water story, and I never bothered to ask the question. It never even occurred to me to ask the question where the water came from. So, so and it, it took me on, that took me on a great little side journey. This, this water right here is exactly the same as it was when it came from space four billion years ago. All the water on the planet was delivered when the Earth was formed or slightly thereafter. There's a raging dispute about how it got here, but comets, meteoroids d delivered the water here. And all of that water was formed in space. It was formed in the, in the simplest way possible. Hydrogen and oxygen mo molecules slamming into each other in space mm -hmm. and, and, and becoming water. And so, so this is really cosmic juice. It came from space in exactly the form it's in now. And there's no mechanism on Earth for creating new water. So it is, in, in some ways, the most important thing to sort of take a step back and appreciate is the good news is water is infinitely renewable. If you're a, a corn farmer in, in uh, Georgia, the water that you put on your fields or the water that falls on your fields is, is usable again as water to grow strawberries or run a steel plant or make <coughs> coffee mm -hmm. as soon as it's done growing corn. The diesel fuel in your tractor or your combine is gone. You use it once, it's gone. The right. water, you get back and you can now it doesn't reappear in your coffee maker from the cornfield, of course. Right, right. But, but we get that water back, and there's no natural resource that that is true of. So the good news is it's obviously infinitely renewable because we've been renewing it for 4 billion years. The bad news is there's no, if you ruin, if you ruin your water supply, you're in tough shape because there's no good way of making new water. So we do need to take care of it, but you said we need to think about it differently, and that's exactly right. We need to remind ourselves that all that that sealed bottle of Evian is Tyrannosaurus rex pee. A dinosaur peed that water without question at right. some point. And so, so water can be cleaned. Water is cleaned all the time, and there should be no discomfort about taking the water we've already got and making sure we use it smartly and use it over and over again while we've got it.